Hi, this is Doug Gregg from Gregg Performance Shooting and welcome to another video on our dry fire drills. Today our dry fire drill is really focused towards beginners and it's on how to find the red dot on your brand new pistol mounted optic view. Okay, so the reason I chose this topic today is in a lot of classes lately we've had a lot of people show up with red dots who either have very little practice with them, just bought them and put them on the gun, and the number one question they all have is, I need help finding the dot. I can't find the dot. So I'm just gonna show you a couple little things today that we teach in our pistol mounted optics classes that can help you at home and, and get you to the point that you're not frustrated with the dot anymore. Okay, so before we get into the drill, let's talk a little bit about what we wanna try and cover today and why we're covering it. Why can't you find your dot? I'm going to be honest with you, 90% of the people that I've worked with is because their fundamentals suck. And why do their fundamentals suck? Is because they were using iron sights and iron sights allow you to be a little sloppy presenting the gun out to the target. So in all of our red dot classes, the first thing we work on is fixing your fundamentals. And we're going to start with the grip. Okay, so before we get into grip, I want to talk about consistency. Being accurate with a handgun means that your fundamentals are consistent and they're good every single time. That also works for using a red dot. If you are already a pretty good shooter and your fundamentals are okay, you probably didn't have a hard time transitioning from iron sights to a red dot. But if your grip is inconsistent, you're not grabbing that gun the same way every single time. You're not presenting the gun out to the target every single time the same exact way. Guess what? You're going to stick the gun out there and you're going to be doing this for, for seconds trying to find that dot. Then you're going to get mad. You're going to put the gun down and say, I'm not using a red dot. I hit, these things suck. They're stupid. And I'm going to walk, walk away, go back and use my iron sights. So we need to be consistent. First thing we're going to do is we're work on consistency with our grip. And before we get into the drill, I am going to make sure that my gun is unloaded and clear. As always, I have no magazine in there. There's nothing in the chamber. Good to go. So I can let the slide go forward. We're going to start out maybe the opposite of what you think. We're going to start out with the gun presented out to the target already. So I'm going to get in what I think is my best stance. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to get into your best stance that you think is the right thing. So I'm going to do what I see most people do out there. They stand nice and tall, their feet just however which way, and they stick the gun out like this, and they get all tactical turtle. I don't want you to get all tactical turtle. Relax. We're starting with the grip. Just stick the gun out there, and I want you to move it around until you can find the dot. Once the dot is in the lens of the, of the, red, of the optic, freeze. I want you to take a mental image of how the gun feels in your hand. I also want you to look at how the gun is in your hand. Look at where your hands are on the gun. Look at where your hands are on each other. Then I want you to slowly bring the gun back to your chest. Straight. From here, I'm going to drive the gun straight out again. But I'm going to do it slow. And there's a couple things I want you to think about. As I'm driving the gun straight out, I'm keeping it straight so that I can pick up the optic in my peripheral vision. If I am doing what you see a lot of people do where they drive the gun where they're fishing, you're not going to see the optic until it's all the way here. So let's give ourselves the best chance to see it earlier and drive the gun straight out. What's the other thing people do? You hear a lot of people say, well, this guy told me to find the dot. What I need to do is just drop, the, look at the iron sights, and it'll bring it into the view. Sure, that'll work. But what I want you to do is why wait till the end? As I'm driving the gun from here, like I said, a little higher than you may be used to, I want you to over-exaggerate this movement. I want you to point the muzzle down as you're driving out. Make a mental note. Point the muzzle down a little bit as you drive the gun out. And what happens is the optic, the dot, travels from the top of the optic down into my line of sight. So I'm not driving it out here, trying to find it. As I'm coming out, I'm making that mental note, 
push the muzzle down, and there it is, right in the center of my screen. All right, so this drill, you're gonna go through the technique that I just showed you. You're gonna face your target, you're gonna start out with your hands fully extended, good grip on the gun, consistent grip on the gun. I want you to 10 times bring the gun back, high in your chest, extend the gun back out, thinking about dipping the muzzle down so you can see the sight. 10 times nice and slow. Right now it's not, a it's not time to build up speed. Speed will come. What I want you to remember though with this optic is both eyes open. That's what it was made for. So if you're doing this drill and you're switching right from iron sights to a red dot, both eyes are open. That's exactly what these uh, optics were made, for, made for. At the same time, I want you to focus on the target. Put a target on a wall, on a wall switch, I don't care what you use. I don't want you staring at the dot. I don't get, want you to get drawn into the dot. I want you to be target focused. At the same time, slow, again. I don't want to hear slow, smooth, smooth is fast, that's a bunch of crap. Slow is slow, fast is fast. I want you to eventually start building up speed, but you have to build up that consistency. You can't go fast if you're out of control, so you're learning to use that, get that control in right now before you start extending it out. The other thing I want you to remember as you're doing this drill is you're not trying to co-witness the dot with your iron sights. That's not how it's meant to be used. Can you do that? Sure, but the dot is meant to be anywhere inside that lens, so don't sit there and try and line up that dot on top of those iron sights. And here's the last thing I want you to remember when you're doing this drill, is I want you to bring the gun up to your head. I don't want you to bring your head down to the gun. What I mean by that is, as I'm extending the gun out, watch what I do. I bring the gun right up into my line of sight. Not once am I bobbing my head down to the gun. The reason being is, if my hand with my eyes, it's easier for my head to stay where it is and bring the gun up into my line of sight compared to my head trying to come down and bring the gun at the same time. Now I have two things moving. Keep your head still, bring the gun up into your line of sight. All right, so the next part of this dry fire drill I want you to do at home, we'll be working from the holster. And if you don't happen to have a holster, I'll show you how you can do this like at an indoor range, uh, if you're gonna do the same drill there. Cause these drills that I'm showing you right now can be done live fire if you wanted to do it. Um, before we get into start drawing from a holster, I want you to remember, and I'm gonna stole this right from Mike Seeklander. When one hand moves, both hands move. So I want you to get into that habit now. I see that with a lot of brand new shooters. Uh, where they start learning to draw from the holster where this gut hand goes to the gun and this one's just kind of hanging around. I want you to get used to now building up that consistency so as my strong hand goes to the gun, my support hand is coming to somewhere in my chest, my upper body. I don't care where, pick a spot, but do that same spot every time. Then what I want to do is I'm going to, again, steal from him the Judy Chop. Judy Chop helps build consistency. And what do I mean by the Judy Chop? What I mean is, as I'm drawing the gun up and my support hand comes here, as I bring the gun out to the front of my body, my support hand comes under the gun. And what I'm trying to do is get this knuckle right here to touch the bottom of the trigger guard every single time. Again, consistency, consistency, consistency. I want to do things the same every single time. That is going to help me become a better shooter in general, not just shooting a red dot. So I bring my hand under, do the Judy chop, and then as I extend out, bring the gun up to my line of sight, bring it back. Bring it up to my line of sight, straight out, bring it back. As you can see, the gun's a little higher than I normally would probably draw the gun and present it, but I, this is for brand new shooters. I want you to get used to driving the gun straight out to the target and straight back. The other thing I'd like you to do is that as you are drawing, one hand's moving and two hands moving is, how I many of you guys have seen this, where your shoulders just hunch up? 
I used to do it a lot. In fact, sometimes I still do it. I want you to try and get into the habit of just moving from the elbows down as I go to draw that gun. So, a little bit of movement in my shoulder. Gun up, Judy chop, drive the gun straight out to the target, come back. And I'd like you to do that 10 times. Once you've done that, now we're gonna add a trigger press. And this is where you're gonna to have to have a little bit of integrity as well. What I'd like you to do is as you extend out, if the dot, you can see it in the, in the optic, press the trigger. If you do not see the dot in the optic at full presentation, bring the gun back and start all over. Don't just arbitrarily throw a shot out there because you feel like you have to. Learn to let your sights tell you when it's okay to shoot the gun. So it'll look like this. Bring the gun up, extend out. And reholster. Do that 10 times. Again, if you don't see that dot, don't sit out there and fish around and try to find it. Restart the process. Work your way backwards from the grip to the presentation to the holster. All right, so the last little technique uh, I want to show you is if you are at an indoor range and say you're going to do this for real, or maybe you're at home and you don't have a holster to draw from, uh, just table pickup drill. So essentially just make sure, again, the gun is unloaded and safe, clear. When you go to pick up the gun, right-handed shooter, have the muzzle, I mean the, uh, excuse me, magwell pointed to your right, left-handed shooter, have the magwell pointed to your left. It just makes it easier to pick up the gun. Nothing too technically challenging about this. Grab the gun with your strong hand, bring your support hand up to your chest like you just like you would for drawing from a holster. Bring the gun up, bring your two hands together, and again, extend out. Place the gun down. Build that consistency. Make sure your hands are in the place, same place, every single time. Couple little things to finish up on here. If you start driving the gun out and you find you're not seeing it, uh, seeing the dot in that uh, in the lens, go back to the beginning. Go right back out to where you have the gun already extended out. Put it so that the dot is in the lens. You can see it. Adjust your hands so that things are right where they need, you want them to be. Take that mental image again. Start right from scratch. Bring it in. Driving the gun straight out until you start seeing the red dot once again. Plenty of times have I done that. When I switch from this large gun, full-size gun with an optic, to my small P365, sometimes I have to sit there and do that exact drill so that I can relearn to present that smaller gun out consistently every single time so I see the dot. Um, don't get frustrated with this. It's very, very easy to get frustrated. Uh, the last instructor course I took on teaching this, uh, they told us it was 800 to 1200 presentations on average to, uh, you know, to, to get so you consistently found a dot. I don't know if it takes that many. I think it depends on you and your training and your background. It's going to take more than two times at the range to get used to this. I will say that. Uh, red dots uh, are not going to make you instantly a better shooter. You're not going to suck at the range one day and go back out there the next day with a red dot and all of a sudden burn it down and be super accurate. They do help with accuracy, but it's not going to make you a better shooter. Um, last thing is, I didn't touch on this earlier, but I really wanted to touch on this now, was why is it so much easier with, with iron sights compared to the red dot? Because uh, iron sights let us cheat. We can stick the gun out there with our iron sights and we don't have to be exact. We don't have to have things perfectly lined up. We're gonna see those iron sights as we drive the gun out there so we can have them all over the place and then make that final correction. Red dots force us to drive the gun straight out, again, becoming a better shooter. And that's really all I have on that. Okay, in closing, I would just like to say thank you very much for watching our video. I hope you found it uh, helpful and informative. Um, if there's any other videos that you'd like to see do dry fire drills on, we're going to start working on some rifle drills and some shotgun stuff here pretty soon. Uh, 
comment below and let us know. Uh, again, we really appreciate it. My name is Doug Gregg, Gregg Performance Shooting. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and our website at gregshooting.com. And as always, please uh, like, comment, and share our YouTube channel and help us grow our company. Thank you.